Okay, I need to get back into the groove here. It's been a couple, been more than a couple weeks since I finished Sonic Adventure, so hopefully this will go well. Sega! Yeah. I do love that logo. There's a lot of interesting little stories about like the background of this game's development. And this game's significant because, believe it or not, this is actually the first Sonic game that a lot of people actually played. Because this game, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle specifically, is the one that got released on the GameCube back when the Dreamcast finally died. And that is the, that's like the story that I think's interesting about this because like for such a long time there, the game industry was the two juggernauts, Nintendo and Sega. Like, the Genesis versus the Super Nintendo, and then, like, Dreamcast versus N64. Like, the N64 came out, and then, like, they had the Sega CD, and they, like, tried a lot of interesting things. Dreamcast is even more easily compared to, like, the PS1 and other stuff, but that's my point. By that point, other competitors started peeking their heads in on the industry, and, the, like, Sega just couldn't compete in terms of hardware anymore. So, this was the last Sonic game that was re released on native Sega hardware. And it was the first one released on <coughs> another co company system when Sega finally bowed out of the console race. Story select. So yeah, like, oh, uh, here's the cool, uh, here's the gimmick of this game is you can play the, you can play the bad guys. The bad guys, as represented by two completely original characters invented for this game, and Eggman. <laughs> I think that's the big draw, though, because look at the way this is distributed. Sonic is at the top, and then Knuckles and Tails, and Eggman is at the top, and then Shadow and Root and, and Root, Rogue, Rouge. So that was the big appeal. Like this game came out, it's like holy shit, you can play as Eggman. That was a big deal, but in reality, here's what this screen actually is. Easy mode, hard mode. The dark story is significantly more difficult than the hero story. So you really do, like, you really are kind of meant to play hero mode first and then dark. The military's top secret weapon, Project Shadow, was stolen from a military base located on the deserted island in the southern seas. This incident increased worldwide terrorist activities. Sonic the Hedgehog was arrested. The adventure for truth leads to the incidents that shock the entire world. The story takes our hero Sonic from the Earth and into outer space. Sonic Adventure 2, Hero Side Story. Farewell, Sonic. Forever. Capital City, quote unquote. I don't know why they who are afraid of calling it Station Square anymore. Everything's a go. This is Control Tower. We have you on radar. Report cargo status of captured hedgehog aboard. Over. Captured hedgehog. That makes it sound like it's such a routine procedure, like their animal control or something. He's taking out everyone aboard! Imagine what that- like, imagine, uh, the opening of Final Fantasy XIII with lightning busting up that train, and imagine that just happened in there with Sonic. That's what I picture. I like running better, so now I'm going to snowboard <laughs> in, instead of running. Uh, that is such a great opening though, although it does leave you kind of scratching your head, because it is kind of devoid of context. Sonic's been arrested, and he's being, like, transported by the military police, and he just broke up, but you start this up, and you're like, what? What's going on? Attention all units. Suspect seen heading south. Pop all major roads and capture the suspect. I'm on screen. I can't do the cool thing. 
So, imagine like when this game came out, I should have looked it up, that's probably like the very, 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 very early 2000s. Imagine the very early 2000s and it's like, like, okay, we're done. Like, we fucked up, no more consoles for us, basically. And that's a very uncertain future, it's like, what's gonna happen now? Like, what's gonna happen to Sonic? What's gonna happen to all these franchises that Sega owns? They don't make consoles anymore. So when this game came out on the Dreamcast, that was kind of a huge deal. I mean, like, imagine Halo comes out on the PS4. Imagine a Halo game comes out on the PS4. Oh, yeah. Night, I would stay at this fucking hotel for sure. <laughs> Uh, that is the equivalent of what what it felt like at the time. To be like, holy shit, Sonic the Hedgehog on a Nintendo console? What timeline is this, right? Hey, little skunky. Aww, what a cutie. <laughs> and, uh, so, because this was the first game they released on the GameCube, this was the first Sonic game a lot of kids who grew up on Nintendo consoles played because, you know, the console wars might feel, like, artificial and stupid, and it is, but, I mean, like, you're a kid growing up in the 90s, your parents aren't gonna get you both consoles. That's what the, that's what the console wars were born of. Like, which console are your parents going to buy for you? Because you're not, they're not gonna get you both, they're gonna go, why the fuck do you need another console? You already have this one. So then, like, that's your only game console, so that's where the loyalties go. So you're a Sega kid, you get all the Sega consoles, rarely did you cross over, right? So you had these kids who grew up as Nintendo kids, never played a Sonic game. Man, this is embarrassing. Never played a Sonic game, so then this finally comes out on the GameCube. It's their very first Sonic game ever. So they can, they, they finally see the light. <laughs> they finally see what they've been missing all this time. Uh, this is also uh, the first Sonic game that Sonic Team made after moving to the US. Because, like, I forget what the specifics of it are, but the team who makes these games moved to San Francisco. And so they were inspired by their new locale to make this game based on what they saw around them, which is why this opening level is very overtly inspired by San Francisco. And there's a lot of overtones of that in this game, where it's very Bay Area uh, vibe to it. There's a lot of, like, oceanfront environments in this game. And I, I love this opening because it's like, Sonic's a hero, right? He's a good guy, he always fights Stalker Robotnik and all that. Then you play this and he's fighting military police robots, he's being, like, cat caught and put under arrest yes. by the military. And all these robots are coming around, and these are not Eggman robots. You can see that if, when I destroyed them, an animal didn't come out. Like, a little power cell, Too yeah. Easy. For some reason, the Let's Play curse is whenever you're on camera, you're just gonna shit the bed for some fucking reason. And put in a really embarrassing performance. Oh no, when I do it off camera. This Fantasy Star Online! Yeah! Right <laughs> and see, like, Planet of the Chow! Bring it and what's your first, like, every single Sonic game up until this point? You beat a level, you fight a boss, that boss is inevitably Eggman, or in Sonic Adventure, it, was, it could also have been Chaos, who was Eggman's, like, minion, for the most part, until the end. <sighs> then you go through this whole level fighting military police robots, and you fight this, like, mech, that's being piloted by a human guy who's like, yo, I have orders to take this hedgehog who has committed crimes and take him under arrest. So it really does feel like... This is Spider 
England. There's a different vibe to this game compared to other Sonic games. It does feel a little darker in comparison to what's come before. And like, it's hard, it's, it's hard to like really describe it. And especially now looking back again, I always like try to emphasize you need to, the best way to look at these things is to look at them in the context of when they first came out. When this game first came out, as a sequel to Sonic Adventure, like, you go from that, Sonic just saved Station hey, Square, he just went care. super Sonic, beat Perfect Chaos and saved Station Square, start this game, holy shit, Sonic's under arrest, what's going on? Okay, I'm gonna let this scene play out real quick. What? Because this is important, I want you to pay attention to what happens here. It all starts with this. A jewel containing the ultimate power. That's the Chaos Emerald! Now I know what's going on! The military has mistaken me for the likes of you! So, where do you think you're going with that Emerald? Say something, you fake hedgehog! Chaos Control! Pause. Okay, so what Shadow just did here was his signature attack, the Chaos Control, and I just need to take a second here of time out to talk about this because this is important. This will come up later. Take notes. There will be a quiz. Uh, what Sonic just said after seeing him do the Chaos Control is he's using the Chaos Emerald to warp. Sonic's conclusion upon seeing what Shadow did was that he teleported. That is incorrect. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> like, I, like Sonic's not technically minded like Tails is, I guess. So he saw that happen and he's like, oh, he teleported. Because that's kind of what it looks like just seeing someone do that. In the same way, before you find out what the secret is, it kind of looks like Dio is teleporting. Because that's what Shadow is doing here. He's stopping time. The Chaos Control is a time-stopping technique. He's using the power of the world to freeze time, or more precisely, slowing down time to such an imperceptible degree that it might as well, for all intents and purposes, be stopped. This is important. This is an important distinction. He is not teleporting. He is slowing down time to such a degree that it appears it is stopped, and then he's so fast normally anyway that he can run around, and to the outside observer, it appears that he is teleporting. So that's what Sonic thinks happened. But that's not what happened. Shadow slowed down time and then ran past Sonic and jumped up on the roof. That's what that slow-mo was. That was Shadow moving in regular time, while Sonic, being a speedster himself, was going like hummingbird wings speed in comparison. So, like when Shadow uses the Chaos Control, Sonic looks like a hummingbird's wings, right? That's the kind of thing. That's why he could sort of see. He can see in the stopped time. He could sort of see Shadow running by him, like probably just out of his peripheral vision and turned around and caught him, right? He didn't go Chaos Control and then Sonic was still facing in that direction. He seemed to notice and turn around immediately. He could still perceive Shadow moving past him in the blink of an eye, which is my evidence to point out that Chaos Control is not a teleportation, it's a time-stopping technique, and when you use it in the multiplayer, Shadow will use Chaos Control and it freezes time. With it's a time stop, and he'll use it again later in the series and it'll stop time. That's what, It's a time stopping technique. This is important. You need to remember this. Chaos Control is not a teleportation technique. It is a time stopping technique, but Sonic thinks it's a teleportation technique. 
I'm the world's ultimate life. So like, again, I, I, I went on kind of a ramble there. You need to remember that. Put, put a pin in that. Oh, what is he? Put a pin in that. Put a pin in that. Put that at the back of your brain. I want you to keep that in mind. It's important. Okay? I need you to remember what we just talked about there. It will be significant. Where the fuck are we? Are we in Sandopolis? Is this Sandopolis on Angel Island and Rug just tried to steal the Master Emerald? It contains special powers that neutralize the energy of the Chaos Emerald. That makes it very powerful. So, what the? Like, this is equal to Sonic Adventure. Apparently, Knuckles learned some things from Tikal during all that. <laughs> we'll see. Dr. Huh, well, this didn't work last time I did it, but whatever. Sonic's not here to help you anymore. Might as well take it for no reason. Okay, bye. Excuse me. Fuck you. Yeah, uh, the mixing in this game is really fucked. In the original Dreamcast release, she screamed when it cut to her face there. But for some reason, when they release this on the GameCube, she screams when it shatters. And also, holy shit, is it so hard to hear their voices over the music. The mixing in this game is fucked up. It's really bad. Like, there are many scenes where if you don't have subtitles turned on, you can't hear what the fuck anyone's saying. We'll see about that, back girl. Directed by Joss Whedon. Yeah, like, again, I'm not gonna sit here in front and say this game's perfect, just like with Sonic Adventure, it has its share of flaws. This being chief among them, I actually hate this. They changed the way Knuckles' missions work. They carried them over from Sonic Adventure, but they changed it a little bit, and I'm not a fan of it. Because in the original, in, in Sonic Adventure, you have the radar active on all three emerald pieces at the same time. So if you're next to two emeralds, both of the radar chimes will start lighting up and telling you where they are. But in this, they decided for whatever reason, and I have no earthly idea why they decided to go with this, but in Sonic Adventure 2, they changed it so where the radar is only active on one emerald at a time. And I don't really get, like, the game design decision behind changing that. I preferred in Sonic Adventure 1 how you would have all three lit up at the same time. And I don't really get why they decided to change it, but for whatever reason they did. And whatever, I guess. But I do perform significantly worse at these stages compared to the ones in Sonic Adventure 1 because, uh, like, again, oh, look, we've been through this area, like, five times, but only now is the emerald icon lighting up, even though we've been- it was right there, and because we didn't get the other two first, that one wasn't lit up and telling us it's there. I just don't- I'm not- I don't agree with that design decision. Personally, I did prefer the way it was before. Yeah. Yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. And again, I'm not going to front and say this game's perfect. It does obviously have its significant share of flaws, technical and in terms of decisions made in gameplay. Hold on. Yeah! This Tails is... is uh, like, is dude, you can barely hear him. Who are you talking to? Uh, they act- I like how he re- apparently he went to, uh, Big. Yeah, so there, you finally have explained why Sonic was, was captured by the police there. Apparently, Tails found, uh, the tornado in front of Big's house, took it back, and fixed it up. Tornado! <laughs> Transformation! That's, if you look on the decal it has there, it says Tornado 3. Because the one in Sonic Adventure was the Tornado 2, this is apparently the Tornado 3. And also, this contributes to Tails' development as a character, and... 
does a fun little thing in terms of the uh, presentation of this game. Because, again, you start this game up, Sonic's been, like, taken prisoner by the police. He's being hunted down by military robots. He's not fighting at bad things. He's fighting military robots. So you're like, what the fuck is going on here? And then you get to this boss, and look, we're fighting Eggman. It's, it almost feels like a classic Sonic boss. This is Eggman in the Eggmobile. He just has, like, just... He slapped some extra mechanical doodads on top... Fuck off. On top of the Eggmobile. Just like he does in, 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 in every game. Like, that's what every boss is. It's the Eggmobile with a little extra doodad slapped on there. So it does feel like... Yeah, it's still a Sonic game. Calm down. Almost. Although, this is an awkward way to introduce this new gameplay style. Tails has a very different gameplay style in this game compared to any- compared to what he had previously. And their introduction to this gameplay style is, here's a boss. Fight the boss fight. Try and figure out how the fuck this controls and what you're supposed to be doing here in the middle of a boss fight. That is a little bit of an awkward thing. But, notice... Uh, you went from the end of Tails' storyline... You went from the end of Tails' storyline in Sonic Adventure, where he's like, I, I, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I can do this, facing down Eggman by himself without Sonic, and that was a big deal. It was a big deal for him, the sidekick, to be like, okay, I can do this, I can be a hero in my own right. I can do this without Sonic's help. Now, he shows up to Prison Island to save Sonic, and he sees Eggman fucking around with Amy, uh, the damsel in distress, and Tails is like, I gotta get in there, I gotta save her. I g like, he stands up to Eggman and basically fights him to a standstill. Like, he doesn't hesitate, he doesn't have to work himself up to it, he's like, oh shit, Amy needs help, time to jump in and be a hero, the next time and meet, face down the Eggman without fear. You can see how Tails has evolved as a character from the last time we saw him. Me? What about you? Again. <laughs> Dude, this mixing is so <laughs> Holy shit, dude, you can barely hear them. It's so bad. So you can see, and, and uh, it's weird that Tails has a different control scheme now, but considering, like, his character development, it does also make sense. Because all throughout the series, up until this point, Tails has been emulating Sonic. He's been like, what would Sonic do? I want to be like him. I want to be cool like Sonic. I want to be a hero like Sonic. <clears throat> That's why his gameplay in Sonic Adventure was basically a carbon copy of <clears throat> Sonic's, except he could fly. Just like it's, it was in the Genesis games. Like, that's what Tails' gameplay is. He's a clone of Sonic, who can fly, which makes him better. <laughs> but in but after <clears throat> Sonic Adventure, Tails distinguished himself as an independent entity. He's like, I can fight Eggman on my own. I can do this. And he, he hasn't quite self-actualized yet. He's still in that sidekick role to a degree, but he has set himself apart. He has said, okay, I can do this on my own. <laughs> this is not simply my way, my own style. Like, I gotta do this the way I want. I can't just emulate Sonic. I can do things my in my own way. Oh yeah, I killed Omo Chow. Fuck you. If you if you can manage to shoot Omo Chow, he breaks. Which is great, that's what I was trying to do earlier. And then you... Okay, let me see if I can do it. Okay, turn on Omo Chow. Stand still! Damn it! There we go, I shot him, and now look, he's all fucked up and dead. Ow. 
Yeah, he gets all butthurt, like, Ow, why'd you shoot me? Because you're annoying, and everyone hates you. <laughs> uh, so, that's like, okay, I can do this my own way. So, it, it on initial analysis, it seems weird that Tails has such a drastically different control scheme. St gameplay style to him compared to what it was previously, but when you think about it, it does make sense. <laughs> Because he's trying to set himself apart from Sonic. He's trying to, like, assert himself as an independent... As having an independent identity. And what is Tails into? He's a mechanic. He's a pilot. He's a really fucking smart dude. So, of course, he's like, okay, what's my thing gonna be? I'm gonna have a mech. I'm gonna turn the plane into a mess and drive that around so like it seems weird at first on initial exposure why is tails like plus it's just e102 gamma's game Boy style. like it might seem weird but it's not like this came from nowhere it's taking e102 gamma's gameplay style from adventure one and polishing it and expanding on it i do feel like this is a vast improvement compared to how E-102 Gamma played in Sonic Adventure. <clears throat> it's not like this came from nowhere and you're like, oh, why does he play like this? They're taking that gameplay style and giving it to Tails, and it does make sense, because Tails is mechanically inclined. And he's piloting the tornado around as he's doing it as well. And it does draw even deeper parallels between Tails and Eggman, which is something that this game is trying to do. Because each of the characters has, like, a rival character that they're slotted against. Like, Sonic has Shadow, obviously. Knuckles, as you saw, had Ro Rogue. Rouge. Fuck, her name's retarded. Had Rouge. And, ta and Tails gets slotted against Eggman, which I think is hilarious, because Eggman is like the series bad guy. He's Sonic's greatest nemesis, or only nemesis, really. And now in this game, Tails is the one that is being slotted as Eggman's, like, rival. Which, again, I think plays into Tails' development as a character. Like, not only <laughs> is he not afraid of fighting Eggman on his own two feet, on his own terms, instead of just playing backup the way he's been in the entire series up until this point, now he's literally, by the game, being presented as Eggman's equal. But, of course, this being a 3D Sonic game, obviously, the narrative is that it's a bad game, and it I never worked in 3. So, like, Tails' gameplay style in this is one of the things that people hold against this game. Because they're idiots. Like, holy shit. Like, I always have, like, pro Jared's terrible fucking video in my head. If you look it up... That's like the- that's the fucking four minutes of pain right there. We'll try and watch Pro Jared's video on Sonic Adventure 2 and just see how long you can do it before you want to rip your fucking eyes out. It is goddamn terrible. <laughs> but it is emblematic of, like, the complaints I get levied against this game, because like I said before, this game is arguably the most acclaimed of the Sonic 3D games. Like, if you ask the fandom, which has its own problems, of course. Hey, buddy. Everything will be okay. Aww. Uh, if you ask the fandom, more often than not, this game will be raised as, like, one of the best ones. It, do it is very highly acclaimed amongst the fandom. So, because you can't ignore it, it was the second 3D Sonic game, and it's, like, w the most famous, popular one. Obviously, they can't pretend it doesn't exist, so they instead need to go, Oh no, this was always bad, because all the Sonic games are bad. 
let's just ignore the ones that aren't bad because that disputes our narrative, and the ones we can't ignore because they're too prominent and unignorable, let's just say they were bad all along. So you have pro Jared being a chuckle fuck asshole going, Oh, this game sucked. Why did we convince ourselves that it was good back in the day? Like, why? Like, this was bad even back then. We didn't really like it. We convinced ourselves that we liked it because of the Chow Garden. I swear to God, that's the way that video ends. Look it up. Pro Jared literally goes, this game sucked, why did we convince ourselves it was good? Because of the Chow Garden. And again, as I explained in Sonic Adventure, I never gave a shit about the Chow. I never got invested in the Chow Garden. Okay. The only reason I came here to do this in, in this, in this, even though I said I wasn't going to do it in Sonic Adventure, I'm here because this is Tales outside of the map. And I just think this is so fun. I would love to run around playing as Tails like this. He has an infinite propeller. He can fly forever. He never gets tired because it's the Chow Garden. He can fly for eternity just staying in place. It's fucking great. And when he jumps, he doesn't turn into a ball. He just jumps normally like Amy or someone. <laughs> Which I think is interesting. <coughs> And I still, like, you never, ever, 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 ever play as Tails outside of the mech. But they still had the thought of, okay, well, when he's in the Chow Garden, we have to make it so that he can fly. Like, they put all that extra work in for a gameplay detail that is never going to be used in actual gameplay. It's only in the Chow Garden. That cracks me up. <coughs> so, yeah, like... Again, another game that, when it came out, best game ever, and even still amongst the fandom, this is still heralded and praised and lauded, but you go outside of that to the Sonic Hate dump, and oh, this is like... And again, it's not that they don't like it. Like, if you want to have your stupid opinion that this game is bad, if you want to be a moron and say, I think this good game is bad, that's fine. You know, I hate you and you're wrong, but you're totally entitled to your opinion. You know, some people believe in a flat earth. You believe Sonic Adventure 2 is a bad game. That's fine. I have nothing against you on that. But the reasons they raise as this is why this game is bad, like you're just stupid. You're just a stupid person and you are entitled to no respect as a human being.